Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Girl Dad Show. Today is a Girl Dad Talk where I share with you uh, my personal parenting journey as I progress through interviews with amazing executives, entrepreneurs, and business leaders, also navigating their professional careers while building their families. And today I want to talk to you about uh, embracing change and really growing as a parent with your kid. Because you think that you are, you know, a parent and uh, uh, building out these theses of what you have for your kids and what you have as a uh, parent. But the reality is your parenting style and who you are and how your values are dictated need to adapt and change as your kids change. And I was really reminded of this um, this last week as, you know, my oldest started to become a lot more self-aware. And obviously it is, you know, nowhere um, as dramatic as, you know, some of these uh, other problems that um, may come in the future <laughs> as she enters uh, her teenage years. But it's definitely very humbling and eye-opening to think about some of the changes that are happening dramatically inside of her lifestyle in the current state from going from like, you know, a toddler to now going into elementary school and being exposed to a lot more types of kids and people and just being more self-aware of herself. And so just to kind of share with you what happened, there was something that, you know, started happening over the last few weeks as it related to her being a lot more embarrassed in public. And uh, I always knew that she had a lot more of a competitive edge and she had this drive to be great at everything and, and push herself. And, um, and she may have gotten that from, you know, just me or wherever that may have come from. And we've really uh, kind of embraced it, but she was very uh, accepting of my cheerleading, my coaching and my guidance, right? I could basically tell her how to navigate these emotions and feelings and how to structure her competitive edge and uh, give her, you know, give her directional support and guidance. Where um, more recently I've noticed that she is challenging that guidance and she wants to know why I think that way or how she was already thinking about it that way versus um, uh, me just listening to my guidance. And I know that there's stages in life and I've been told this by many mentors that, you know, kids will evolve and grow into kind of starting to find themselves in the second tranche of their development, you know, and they start to ask a lot of questions and start to figure out who they are and how they want to be. But it didn't really crystallize until last week when my kid, I was taking a selfie of her and she smiled with her mouth closed. And I asked her why she wasn't smiling with her mouth open. And she confided in me that she was embarrassed that she had so many teeth missing because she's losing a lot of teeth right now. And it kind of took me aback because I realized that she was self-aware. She was insecure about her missing teeth. And it took me a minute to kind of catch my breath and process what was happening because, you know, this joyful kid that's just like kind of oblivious of, you know, social cues like that was developing insecurities and self-awareness. And um, I just um, didn't think about like how, how that would impact her and what it just everything in my mind was racing on like trying to figure out why that came to be and how that came to be and you know just realizing that this is the natural course of life right and this is where she's headed and it's going to continue to grow and develop and really put me on my laurels a little bit to figure out who i wanted to be in this next kind of chapter of my daughter's growth and development as she starts to you know, have these questions about who she is and what that uh, what that awareness looks like and how she interacts with other people and, and and learns these social cues, because my initial reaction was just to tell her, like, it's very natural to lose your teeth. And all of her peers and friends were also losing their teeth and um, and um, uh, not to be embarrassed. And it's OK. She was still beautiful and lovely. And and I loved her incredibly. And I was able to, you know, have a really good moment with her in the moment <laughs> and we were able to hug and, and love each other in that moment. And I know she felt good about it, but she continued to, she, even now she continues to, you know, close her mouth when she smiles. And it's very interesting because in that moment, 
she was also able to articulate that a lot of her other classmates don't have missing teeth. And she also made a comment in another setting where she mentioned how her sister has really nice teeth because she has all of her teeth and her smile looks nice. And it's just very interesting that these things are forming and um, it's incredibly, it's incredibly challenging as a parent to one, realize that this is a natural progression of life and societal changes that will happen as they develop, you know, in, in society and school and get exposed to other kids and, and, and this concept of like judgment and friendships being formed through those judgments and values being perceived. And, you know, just, it's just a natural course, right? It's very, very natural, but I have a lot of mixed emotions around it because as a dad and as a parent, you know, I need to embrace it and um, empathize with it and also just really figure out what kind of parent I want to be. Because my initial reaction is just to tell her not to do it and be very directive and kind of treat her the way I've treated her the last seven years of her life. And, um, and it still works very well with her younger sister, right? That kind of directive guidance. And um, when I apply that pressure to her now, I can see the fringes of her reaction starting to evolve to her not accepting that response. And I think that I can pressure more and I can be more uh, dictatorial, um, which I think my parents did. And I think it'll be fine. And part of me thinks that there's some levels where I need to dictate that to her and tell her what's right and wrong and help her build those foundational elements. And I also think that my wife is right in a lot of senses too, being able to like pull her aside afterwards in private and have a conversation with her about it, right? And talking to her about it, about like working through her emotions and her mindset and like thinking through what those problems are. And um, I have a lot of mixed emotions, you know, on one side, I'm, I'm really happy that my daughter is growing and she's evolving and she's learning to figure out who she is as a... Um, a young girl and um, developing, you know, the social cues uh, and how she wants to interact with it. But on the flip side, obviously, I want the best for her. I want her to be confident and happy and and impervious to these uh, human flaws that we all face as we grow up. And so it's one of those situations where I know it's going to happen no matter what. And it's something that is so... Um, natural and prevalent in all of our lives as adults, when we think back to, you know, what made us who we are, it all comes from these trials and tribulations, these, these, these social flaws and these instances of pain or, or ridicule or awareness that creates these um, moments that kind of craft who we are as humans and, um, and as adults. And I don't want to overprotect her from, those experiences, but I also want to help her establish herself as a confident um, adult and, and, and contributor to the world. And it's just a very, very interesting moment for me as I start to realize I'm headed into this new direction where, you know, she is now questioning, you know, my perceptions and my rules and guidances and wanting to understand it for herself. And I'm uh, both eagerly excited about it because I think that it's natural and amazing to, to head into this direction. But I'm also very, very sad because um, it's going to be incredibly challenging for me. Uh, I think that, you know, having those kind of like slow down conversations with her and trying to empathize with her and talk her through these things is going to require a new set of muscles and skills for me that I'm probably not as equipped and ready to handle. And so, um, and I'm not sure I, I'm, I'm too happy with the fact that she's growing up. And I think that's the reality of the situation is that she is growing up and I can't protect her forever. And she needs to be exposed to the world and understand how to best navigate it. And I need to figure out how I wanna best prepare her for that navigation together, especially as it relates to supporting her, you know, self-confidence and self-image. You know, I, I definitely want her to not not worry about those things. And I know you don't want to tell people, even adults, to not do something, right? Because that's not the best way to develop a new skill or uh, mindset. You know, you want to encourage them to think of things that are, that are more healthier and enhancing instead of just saying, don't do something that's negative and bad. And um, 
I got to figure out ways to really encourage that because the reality is I don't want her to be self-aware about missing teeth. I mean, that's so like, so natural. And I, and granted, I mean, it sounds like she's like one of the first kids in her class that has missing teeth. So that's probably uh, one of those points and it'll maybe resolve itself naturally as other kids start to have their teeth fall out and she'll realize that everyone has it and that'll be a good life lesson and learning lesson for her that she'll be able to catalog in her brain as she develops. And I'm hoping to be there for her to kind of remind her of those instances so we can really solidify that into her kind of pillars of who she is because, you know, self-confidence and, um, openness about who we are is very, very important to me. And it's really important to me as a father to my daughters, that they understand that they're loved and who they are and what they are is very, very um, um, good. And they don't need to have this like uh, projection of perfection. And I don't want them to feel that way ever. And uh, also being able to identify that if people judge her for those things, that they're not ideal people to have in her life. And, um, and just being able to navigate that with a little bit more understanding of how the world works and how it impacts her and what she should and shouldn't care about and what she should inherit and not, you know, because especially my oldest is incredibly, incredibly um, empathetic to other people's feelings. And uh, she really feeds off of that. And so, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out how to be a better father in this next stage of her life as she um, is requiring more of a like teacher kind of a, um, not a, it's not a friend. It's just not like a top down like parent, you know, where I think my youngest is still in that stage. Like, I'll give you another example. I was uh, at her soccer game the other weekend and I was yelling from the sidelines, giving her guidance and telling her to do X, Y, and Z. And after the game, she came up to me and said, I don't like it when you tell me what to do. I'm already thinking about doing those things. I don't need you to tell me to do those things, especially if you're just sitting there and you're not playing the game. And it was so funny. It was so funny to me that she felt indignant that I was talking to her from the sidelines and giving her guidance when I wasn't in the moment and didn't give her the time to even do the things that she was already thinking about. So one, there's like a level of indignancy because she felt like she was doing, uh, that she was going to be able to do those things without me telling her. And I just, she just needed more time to actually do it or execute it. And then two, I think there's a layer of uh, embarrassment, right? Because I'm kind of doing this in public with all of her teammates and friends and family around. And so um, I think that that was a really funny moment for me, but, and I'm not saying that it's a super serious thing. I think, you know, a dad's job is basically to embarrass their kids. <laughs> and I definitely will keep encouraging her to, um, you know, be humble and, and have humility through that kind of uh, banter and um, uh, public uh, embarrassment. And I don't necessarily know if I'll ever be able to stop that. But I do think I need, need to have a more concerted focus on how I do it, because I also don't want her to think of me as someone that is, um, unapproachable or too linear either, because I do think that I think of my parents that way, you know, in many, many regards, and they've, they continue to be very top down, very directive. And, and it's, um, it's kind of a strange relationship in a lot of ways, right? Because there's no conversations happening. Uh, and if they do, they're starting to happen now. And I can see the, uh, see the fringes of that happening now in my forties with my father having like, you know, somewhat of a dialogue back and forth, but even now it's still highly directive. And, um, I think that that has allowed, you know, that has allowed many cultures and civilizations to, you know, grow up the way that it has. But I definitely think that for me, as I think about what I want to be for my kids, I want them to have a father that's a, maybe just a little bit more in tune with their, uh, growth and desires and being able to like match them where they're at. Right. Especially because I, I really think about this, like, um, what do I want at the end of the day? You know, at the end of the day, when I'm old, I want my kids to be happy. I want them to be productive. I want them to be confident and, 
um, giving and contributing to their community in a very healthy and productive way. I want them to love me and want them to be around me. Um, as they get older, I want them to want their kids to be around me and me to be a good example for them and their kids. And when I think about that previously, I used to think about that as like setting the example of who I am and kind of like being that like etched in stone. This is what I'm known for. This is who I am. And them remembering those, those moments. But in reality, you know, what I'm really realizing over the last week or two is that it has a lot more to being a situational leader and adapting to the needs of my kid. And as my kid learns new skills and they are evolving and developing new mindsets and theses um, and also insecurities and self-awareness, I need to meet them where they're at. And, and I'm not going to be perfect at this and nor do I want to be because I, I do want them to also learn new things and I want to challenge them and push them to be more confident. And I want to, I want to make sure that they are um, hearing from me that certain insecurities are incorrect and how to overcome them as well too. And I can't just let them dictate those things either. Right. But I do want to be a little bit more malleable in that I want to be able to have these conversations and be able to um, share with them my thought process and logic so that I can adapt to them as they grow up to be adults. <laughs> and I don't think it's a binary thing that, you know, you, you think about like, Oh, you know, when you hear these, you hear these like eulogies of people, it's like, you know, they were always X, Y, and Z or, they were this and this and that, and, and that's what made them somewhat honorable, right? This kind of like etched in stone, like characteristics of the person. And I think you can have that. And I think that that is very honorable. And I think that it is very lovable and respectable. But I also think that the path to getting there can be also very situational and learning how to adapt to those things. And so um, I'm, I'm on that journey right now, and I wanted to share with you some of the things that I'm noticing in my parenting journey, hoping that it helps you with yours, no matter what stage your kids are at. And uh, just embracing the fact that we as parents also need to grow, just like our kids are growing. They're growing, and they're evolving, and they're learning, and they're developing who they are, both physically, mentally, emotionally, and societally. And it's quite literally impractical for us to think that we don't also need to change and grow with them. And so my uh, challenge to you and my thought process to you is take this uh, story and this episode to uh, see how you can better fit the needs of your kids. And what are you doing to evolve and change to be around them? Because I think there's a lot of elements where they're a part of our lives and we get to take them where we want to go and we want to guide them and help them. But it's like a journey and it's like it's like um, it's like a journey of transition, except the transition is happening over the course of their 20 years that they that they're under your purview. And, you know, these things are happening slower and probably a lot more uh, wider tranches of time, but they are inevitably happening. And if you don't do the constant check ins to see where you're at on their journey, you may not be maximizing the full potential of your relationship with your kids, nor will you be maximizing your ability to lead and guide them to being, you know, good, good humans and good adults, good, happy adults. And so that's really what I'm trying to share with you today and kind of the journey that I'm on as I think about, you know, just business and work and life and how busy everything is. And while I'm so busy and I'm developing myself professionally and I'm learning new skills and meeting new people and entering new industries, I'm just starkly reminded that my kids are also developing and learning. And if they're important to me, then what's important to them is important to me. And we need to take the time to stop what we're doing and check in to make sure that we are being the best parent for them in that moment as they develop and learn as well too. So in closing, I just wanted to say embrace the life stages that you have with your kids. And if you're having a life stage change with your kids right now or on your professional parenting journey, I'd love to hear it in the comments. And uh, please tell me if you have any questions or thoughts and uh, let me know what you want to hear about next. But I hope this episode was helpful for you. 
I'm very, very excited about embarking on this new stage with um, uh, my daughters, even though it is bittersweet. And I look forward to sharing more with you as I unpack more about it and uh, research on how to be a better father during this stage of their development. Thank you again for tuning into this episode. If you found this helpful, I would really greatly appreciate us appreciate you giving this a five-star review and sharing it with other working parents. Talk to you soon. Thanks.